Hello, my friends. Again, this is Dr. Mohammed Nizami uh, with another video on RF and microwave devices. This is the third short video on OMTs and uh, polarizers, uh, design and modeling using ANSYS HFSS. Okay. So if you um, haven't watched my other two videos, I recommend that you do that before you go on and watch this video. Otherwise, you will be missing some information. Uh, uh, so we talked last time on um, a few of OMTs. And just as a reminder, what is OMT, orthomode transducer, OMT, and polarizer? They're both basically used to combine or split or separate or filter out or demultiplex or uh, uh, separate uh, or combine a uh, two signals are orthogonally polarized. Could, they could be at the same frequency or different frequencies. They could have the same modulation or different modulations. Okay. And we said last time that the OMT in the case of uh, ground stations, SATCOM ground stations, or uh, or SATCOM uh, transponders. Basically, the devices are used in the front end feed of the as a feed part of the feed for the antenna, and it's basically this unit here. This is called OMT. It has a, it's a three port, well three mechanical ports. In actuality, electro electrically, it's four ports. And you can refer to the literature, why is that? Um, but uh, it's a three port device that is shown in this case in here, which basically multiplexes the high power uh, block up converter from the uh, SATCOM uh, signal going up to the uplink and the downlink signal, which is coming from the horn antenna that gets fed to the LNA. And we did mention that there is usually um, there's a 90 degree uh, bend in the E field, e field bend, which is just so that the, this thing doesn't stick out 90 degrees. So they want to they fold it so that it has a smaller uh, cross section. Uh, so, uh, so it's more compact. Uh, so this is a transmit rejection filter to reject the power that might leak from the uh, PA down this way to the LNA. And we did say that another use of this, uh, so this could be here, this, this OMT used in here is basically to separate vertical and horizontal signals, okay? At the, at the same frequency or at the two different frequencies, okay? And also we mentioned that it could be also used in the line of sight, they do use OMTs to combine or separate uh, orthogonal polarized signals uh, for the use of di either diversity or uh, doubling the capacity. Like in this case, for instance, we could have a transmitter one here on the vertical transmitter two on the horizontal. It could be at the same frequency, but being modulated with two different modems so, so, so that you can double the data rate. Or they could be the same data rate. Okay, this is, I mean the same signal uh, uh, information, modulation, the same um, modulated data except that what we do, we send them vertical horizontal so that the receiver on the other side does not use his linear polarized antenna. It uses a circular polarized antenna. That way you can develop the power or and, and, and therefore have uh, another degree of diversity so that when during fading, if the signal fades on the vertical, it would uh, unlikely that it would fade on the horizontal. So you combine these coherently and you end up with a 3 dB increase in signal to noise ratio. So that's another use. So, okay. And we did cover two, um, two of these devices. If we may go to the, back to the, uh, to the, to, to the, uh, to the HFSS, we did cover one OMT, which was this one here, where we uh, uh, basically uh, we have here is the rectangular waveguide. It could be circular as well, uh, same thing. Uh, and here's the uh, the rectangular on the axial one, the direct one. And here's the 
the one that is the coupled port. Okay, so this is the OMT. And this OMT, we, we did uh, detail that it was basically used a stair stepping to do the impedance transformation. Now, similar to this, this was a KA band, I guess, uh, uh, KKA. The other one that we talked about was this one where uh, we used um, uh, the, the tapering to do the same exact function of transformation. Uh, transformation. So this is basically uh, same thing, this device, except now what we have, uh, as you can see, here's the uh, slot in here. So we do have the couple, the, uh, the direct one, and we did uh, detail those, and I recommend that you go back to the previous videos, okay? So now today we're gonna cover another set of, um, another device, which is basically this device in here. And what this device is, you've got the square wave, okay? And I exaggerated the length of this. And so what we place is a septum metal piece in the middle, okay? And what that will do is if you have a circular polarized signal on this port, that signal will propagate. And as soon as it starts hitting these stair steps, it will actually be separated in, into vertical and horizontal. And they will end up at two different, um, two different ports in here, two different rectangular um, waveguide ports. So one would be the vertical, one would be the horizontal. And what we could do we could either feed these with another waveguide extension, or we could feed them with basically a transition in here, um, just like similar to the transitions that I did cover already, um, like uh, coaxial. Um, in that case, we would short this and probe right here. Okay, and so this can be done implemented either square wave, uh, square waveguide, or circular wave. So let's go back to the theory. So we did cover this, and so. Uh, Let's go ahead and look at this again. So here is the uh, septum in this case. And as you can see, it's a rectangular waveguide on one side or a square like in this case. And we place in the middle of that on the axial uh, side, uh, we, we place the septum. And this septum, actually, there is a, a design procedure in which you have to calculate the length and the height of these septums. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is sixth order um, transition that 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 one. And, and there's a, a lot a lot of theory uh, behind, uh, it's very simple set of equations and they're very much detailed. If you just type step septum polarizer calculation of the septum dimensions, you'll you'll get that basically. So and this is how it looks basically. If you have here's the corrugated horn, and the wave the square waveguide in here is being is being fed after a very short transition mechanical transition from circular to square, and then you get basically this is the uh, the septum in here which separates these. Okay. Oh. So let's just detail in theory what happened, really, in very simplicity and in, in simplicity. Here's a signal. So if you have a signal in here, which is circularly polarized, okay, and if you look at the uh, basically the e the uh, the x axis, the horizontal e field in this case, in this case it's pointing to the left, in this case it's pointing to the right. So you could say that the rotation of this is, is counterclockwise and the rotation of this is clockwise. And you can trace out, this is basically these slots in here, these dashes, this, this here, correspond to the length of this here, okay? And you can see it, when we start, we start very tiny little height and that's represented in here. And so you can see that if you trace the horizontal and the vertical, what happens to them, Look at the horizontal. We start splitting in here, splitting in here, splitting in here, and then we end up with two splits that are out of um, opposite to each other, two halves. Where on the other side, we split, 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 and we end up splitting two halves that are in the same direction. So now the superposition of 
this side here with this side, these are opposite, so they cancel out, or, or actually just go up further here. So if you sum up this with this, they double, and this with this, they are out of phase and they become zero. So if you have a signal that is has a, um, uh, a left-hand sided E field, horizontal E field, what you're gonna end up with is that this rectangular waveguide in here will have a signal and this will not have any signal, okay? Likewise, if it's the other way around, without going into the details, you can see that the signal is gonna end up in here, okay? Very simple. And it's really explained further in the literature, so you can also. So now, mechanically, how to uh, feed, integrate this with the rest of your system. If it's a circle we've got, like in this case, for instance, in here, you place a septum, you place a short on the back end, and you put two probes, because they're just rectangular waveguides at this point. So you put two coaxial, two waveguide probes, and you just go into your uh, the rest of your system. Same thing you would do for the, if it is a square a waveguide instead of a, a circular waveguide. Also, you could pass the signal along with, as, as, as an E-field signal uh, in, 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 the, um, in the TE mode. I mean, these are TM mode uh, conversion. This is the TE mode using waveguides. So you could come in with septum and then, of course, uh, at the at the back where you have the two rectangular waveguides, they're so they're they're sitting by each other, so you can't really do anything unless you kind of use a bend, a ninety degree bend, to split them apart, so that mechanically you can fit uh, more stuff to it, like a buck or an L and B and so forth. So that's what this is right here. It's a ninety degree bend to accommodate, uh, so the signal is left as a T mode signal, not through a trans uh, or coaxial mode. Okay, so let's go into the um, HFSS and start showing how the signal uh, propagates. So I did this here with the dimensions are all uh, parameterized, okay, right here. So I've got all the lengths, the heights uh, numbered. So that, because what you want to do is you want to place it, you know what the waveguide dimensions. So, and you know that this septum has to sit in the middle. So you come up with a, with a bunch of numbers corresponding to the length and the height of every one of these, okay? And and then you run your, uh, you sweep it. And, and of course, uh, like in this case, for instance, and here you can see the three ports, the uh, return loss, pretty good. And you can see the transmission which is just a waveguide, okay, for both modes, okay? I mean, both ports, vertical and horizontal. And then, so now you can actually see the E field. Let's, let's show how the E field behaves. Okay, so let's animate this. This is at, uh, okay, so let's animate this. Okay, let's see what, where I set the signal. So it seems like what I did is as I set the feeding on this side here, okay? This is the common port is the one that is fed and the signal comes out of this waveguide in here, the one on the left-hand side, okay? And uh, if I come in and I switch the direction of the E field of the uh, direction of, of polarization on the square wave here, and I could do that by going into the field, okay, and it is sources. So if I can come in here instead of zero and 90 degree, I'm gonna put this 90, this is zero. And that what that will do, that will reverse the direction of the horizontal component. So as soon as I hit this, it automatically recalculated. Now it's on the right-hand side waveguide, okay? So you can see that, and of course the left-hand side is getting very little signal in there, okay? And so now the ratio, the, the ratio of power to, from here to here, that's the isolation basically between the, or the uh, uh, cross polarization ratio, um, you might call it. So uh, So let's go the other, let's have more fun on this. Let's just go back to the, uh, put it in the other direction, feed the signal from the, uh, 
from the uh, rectangular side. So we're going to put it in here, and this is zero. And let's apply this. So now what I did is I applied the signal in here, okay? So you could go out and see how the signal is propagating to here, basically, and getting over to here. Likewise, if I go in and uh, apply the signal in this port and zero this port, you can see that the now the signal is propagating and the rotation, of course, we could go into the E field component and see where the rotation is going. So we could actually, let's see if uh, I can show that in here. And I think the reason for this uh, is because the scaling is 20, so let's put it at 10. Okay, let's go back and animate this just to see if we can see the direction. I don't know how well this would be visualized, but uh, so you can see that the E field on this side is here on this port, okay? And now the rotation is basically, let's see if we can see that. That's the side of the, the side is fed. This is the, okay, I guess, yeah. Can't really see it, but uh, in any case, so uh, this is basically now what I just was doing basically is, is really, uh, closed in inadvertently, uh, Okay, so what I was doing is basically systematically observing this phenomenon that is explained in here, okay? So this wraps up the, um, the, the video on the uh, OMTs and polarizers, okay? And so hopefully uh, a lot of you will find this interesting. Um, what one of the videos that I will do in the future is come in here and, and add a coaxial transition to each one of these sides and see how this behaves um, so that we can see it just like this one in here, for instance, two, two of them. So until then, I wish you all good time. Next, we will be talking about radial combiners. Okay, those are the much more sophisticated devices and hard to model. So until then, have a great day and have fun. Bye. Bye.